Welcome to the Kaleidoscope of Possibilities, Alternative Perspectives on Mental Health. My name is Dr. Adriana Popescu. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and leader in the field of mental health, energy psychology, addiction, trauma, and empowerment. In this podcast, we will be exploring mental health from a variety of perspectives, from the spiritual to the shamanic and beyond. What if mental illness isn't everything we think it is? What if everything we see as a pathology is actually a possibility? What else is possible with mental health? Hi everyone, Dr. Adriana Popescu here with you today for another episode of Kaleidoscope of Possibilities, Alternative Perspectives on Mental Health. And what I wanted to talk with you all about today is actually something that comes up a lot in my work as a psychologist, as an empowerment coach, Uh, working with trauma, addiction, and really just about anything um, that people come to me to work on. And it's this idea of psychological reversals. So what is a psychological reversal? Well, it's when we're really not completely energetically congruent with what it is that we're asking for. So what I've discovered in my own work on myself and working with clients for over 20 years is that Um, whatever we're asking for, we will receive. Like this ask and you shall receive is really how things work in the universe. But the problem is that most people, one, aren't conscious of what it is that they're asking for, and two, are not actually okay with receiving what it is that they're asking for. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so not knowing what your ask is kind of shows up in the form of unconsciousness and patterns that we tend to repeat. For example, if you have a lot of trauma and drama in your world, and maybe you grew up that way, and it's kind of what you're used to, subconsciously, you might actually be asking for more of that to show up right? Um, If you have a core limiting belief, like I'm not enough, I don't deserve to be happy, right? That point of view is actually attracting to you people, places, situations, whatever the case may be, to actually mirror back to you how you really feel about yourself. So consciously in your head, you might be thinking, oh, I'd really love to find a partner that is kind and caring to me and that I can be really happy with. Like you might be saying that, but if your history is one where maybe you have abuse, uh, maybe in the past you have not been treated kindly and with respect and you have this expectation, this unspoken expectation that might not even be conscious, it might be totally subconscious, you might actually then be not okay with having the kind and caring because your comfort zone, what you're used to, is people being abusive, people being unkind. This is why you see something like um, people who are abused as children growing up and getting into violent, abusive relationships as an adult. You see that pattern of victimization happening over and over and over again because somebody inside is believing that's what I deserve, that I must not be a very good person. And so unconsciously, they'll keep attracting these people into their world, these situations to mirror back to them and and really confirm that belief. And what ends up happening is throughout a lifetime, people accumulate all these experiences which tend to, as my friend TJ Woodward loves to say, concretize those beliefs that we have that are typically false. They're not even true, but we come to believe that they're true and they become part of our programming. So just like your computer has uh, soft, you know, your computer in order to run software and do what it does, it has programming. So do we as beings have programming that guides how we are in the world. And what so many of the techniques that we've had from these amazing guests that I've had so far on the podcast, what so many of these techniques are doing is helping us get more clarity around what that programming is and then giving us really easy to use tools to be able to shift those things, okay? So when I'm working with a client, one of the things that I wanna do first is get clear on what their targets are, 
right? What is it that they are wanting to create, right? So I might have a client come to me and say that they would like to make, you know, a million dollars a year, okay? And so then I'm looking at that and I'm saying, great. Now let's see if you're actually energetically congruent with what it is that you're asking for. And there's a lot of ways to do that, okay? In modalities that use muscle testing, okay, uh, this is applied kinesiology. It's a really interesting um, technique that chiropractors really started using um, back in the 40s and 50s when applied kinesiology came out because they realized that bodies actually respond to... Uh, to statements that are to stimuli, right? So let's put it this way. Bodies respond to stimuli. Your body's muscles will contract in the presence of certain stimuli. This is how a lie detector works, for example, right? When you are hooked up to a lie detector, they have these like electric probes on you, and then they'll say statements to you that may be true, may be false. And your body, it's, it's autonomic responses. It's not really something you can control unless you do a lot of work on that. Like yogis have learned to control their breath for minutes at a time. You can learn to override <laughs> um, a lie detector machine. You can learn how to have more control over your autonomic functions, like your breathing and your muscle tone and things like that. But for most people, um, it's not within their scope of control. And so their body will automatically react to certain stimuli. So when you're doing a, um, a lie detector test, it's those little twitches on the graph are muscle spasms, okay? So what <laughs> some very creative people have realized is that, oh, well, if we muscle test people, and usually it's an arm test, you know, where somebody's like pushing down on your arm as you say um, a certain statement, or they say a certain statement, and then they're seeing how your body responds. When they push down on your arm and it's able to stay strong, that means it's a true statement for you. So if I had somebody right now testing my arm and I said, my name is Adriana, I would expect that to be strong, okay? If, I, if they gave me a false statement or I said, my name is Fred, I would expect my arm to go down because it's a muscle contraction. I actually cannot keep my arm up when this response has been activated, which causes the muscle to actually weaken and contract, right? Because the statement's not true for me. And uh, it's a lot easier to do this when I have another person, you know, to demo on. But you can also do it yourself. There are many ways to self-muscle test. The O-ring is kind of a classic example. It's where you are basically trying to push your finger through. You're holding these two fingers together and you're trying to push your other finger through. So um, let's say, um, let's do this with location. So right now I'm in San Francisco, California, and that tests strong. If I were to say right now I'm in Paris, France, my finger goes through because these muscles cannot stay holding that place. Say I'm in Paris, France. I'm in San Francisco. Right? You get the difference? That's one way to self-muscle test. Um, there are other ways. Um, I've done one where I do this, where I push down on this finger. And that's cool because I can be just sort of down here with a client like on the side. I have a version where I do one like a claw like this, um, where the, the strong muscle test is you know, like this and the weak is like this, or in this case, the strong muscle test is like this and weak like this. That's one tool to kind of ascertain if somebody is energetically congruent with whatever it is that they're asking for. Um, and then in this other modality I use a lot called access consciousness, we use a tool called light and heavy. And to me, this is sort of like the internal muscle test in a sense. It is a felt sense that you experience within your body of what's energetically true for you or not. So if, for example, with the San Francisco thing. So right now I'm located in San Francisco. When I check in with my body, the energy feels kind of light and expansive. If I say right now I'm in Paris, France, it just falls heavy. It's almost like I feel the energy kind of going down here and falling like a brick, right? So we use this to help get clarity around 
um, what's going for on for us in the more conscious cognitive realm and what's going on for us in the subconscious realm where we're not always aware of what's going on. And in the subconscious, as Dr. Nims talked with us about on the Be Set Free Fast episode of this podcast, it's the subconscious material, the programming, all of that, that tends to get in the way of us creating what we would like to create. So for example, this includes traumas we've experienced, unresolved stuff, unresolved traumas, unresolved emotions, fears, doubts, um, limiting beliefs, all of these things, negative expectations, like when you have catastrophic thinking and you're assuming the worst is going to happen, these are the things that end up becoming the saboteurs right? They become the inner saboteurs to actualizing whatever it is you're asking for. So this is why ask and receive, you know, you watch movies like What the Bleep Do We Know or The Secret or whatever, and everyone's talking about how you want to be the energy of what you're asking for. But the problem is you can't, affirmations alone, this is why they don't always work. Because you could be saying, um, yes, I am I am a talented, gifted individual. But if you have a core belief that says otherwise, if you have a core belief that says you're a failure, you're a loser, you're no good, those two things are opposed and they're going to create cognitive dissonance. And it's going to basically stop the energy of whatever it is you are trying to create. Okay? So from the field of energy psychology... Roger Callahan, who was the original uh, inventor, creator of the modality thought field therapy, which is tapping, uh -huh. he came up with this term psychological reversal when he discovered that people were getting stuck and didn't seem to be able to move forward with whatever it is they were working on. So he came up with some ways to address the psychological reversal using the tapping. And he often talks about how he would talk about, he's no longer with us, how this, the side of the hand point that we use in EFT, TFT, is the psychological reversal point, right? So if we do, for example, with an offshoot of TFT called EFT, Emotional Freedom Techniques, Gary Craig's work, you've heard this mentioned if you've listened to other episodes of the podcast, um, when we're doing EFT tapping, right, we might be addressing those psychological reversals. So even though I have doubt about my ability to be successful, I love and accept myself anyways, right? So when we're doing that, we're naming kind of what that reversal is. Even though I'm scared, I'll never get what I want. I choose to believe that it's possible. So we're pairing that negative belief, feeling, whatever it is, with a positive statement. And what that's doing is that's we know from tapping that we're activating parts of the brain, specifically the amygdala. The amygdala is our emotional center, okay? It's what drives a lot of our reactivity. It's also what puts us into that fight, flight, freeze response, okay? So when we're doing this tapping on this psychological reversal point, right? And we're basically telling our brain, okay, I have this doubt, I have this limiting belief, I have whatever this is, but I'm choosing to let it go. I'm choosing to accept myself anyways. That starts to create an opening for us to actually be able to release that. And then we might go through a series of uh, tapping on different acupuncture points, basically to release whatever that psychological reversal is and where it came from, you know. So um, in the spirit of, you know, wanting to make at least a million dollars a year, it might look like even though I doubt my ability to ever be that financially successful, I love and accept myself anyways, right? And then we might be tapping on, okay, this fear uh, that I'll never make that much money, you know, I can feel it in my body, in my chest. My chest is tightening, you know. Um, no one in my family has ever been that successful. You know, who would I be if I actually um, had that much money? 
Um, it freaks me out to even think about it because then I'd be responsible for managing my money and I don't trust that I can manage my money, right? And then we just start getting into what's kind of the story around this belief, this fear, whatever this is that's creating that blockage to having that million dollars, okay? And what's really cool about modalities like tapping EFT or TFT, um, be Set Free Fast, Dr. Nim's work, um, NET, Dr. Walker's work. These are people I've all interviewed before on the podcast. They have within their technique modalities to actually address these limiting um, energies that are stopping us from you know, having what it is we want because ask and receive, remember, it works, but this is now working with the receiving side of it. Because you're not, if, if whatever you're asking for and working towards is not showing up, it means you've got some sort of blockage. And I see things in terms of energy. So I see it as an energetic blockage that's getting in the way of getting what you want. And these techniques are going to help us figure out what that is and then how to clear it. So in Be Set Free Fast, we have something called the fail safe sequence. And it's a series of statements that we go through where we can either muscle test or we can just kind of feel into it and get a sense for um, if, if we're actually having something blocking us here. So for example, with the target of having a million dollars a year, um, we might check for, I'm okay with having a million dollars a year. Um, I'm willing to have it. I want to have it. I give myself permission to have it. And when you sit with each statement, you might recognize things that come up. And of course, having a facilitator like a therapist, a coach is, can help you because sometimes because this stuff is below your consciousness, you might not even be aware of it. So, you know, you might come up with, you might get... Um, on a, it's safe, for example. It's safe for me to make a million dollars a year. That my muscle test is weak. Or you might just get the sense that, yeah, no, it's not safe. And then you might ask a question like, okay, well, what's that about? And then, you know, maybe something will pop into your head like this. I've seen this one come up before where people had a grandparent or someone in the family who lost it all in the great stock market crash of 1929. So for example, we now know through like epigenetics that traumas can be passed down from generation to generation, uh, both collectively, like when we look at um, systemic issues like slavery, racism, things like that, you see that getting passed down generation to generation, but also individually. Like when we see... Um, PTSD, post-traumatic stress effects in the grandchildren of people who survived the Holocaust, right? So if there's a trauma in your family history where somebody maybe had a lot of money and then lost it all or had a lot of money and then had it stolen or something, you know, traumatic happened around money, uh, or maybe if you go further back, there was uh, starvation. Uh, people went through the Irish potato famine. You know, whatever it is, there could be something in the family history and the ancestral history um, that is still having an effect. So then we might use the Be Set Free Fast Q, or we might tap on whatever that original event was that is causing the person to not feel like it's safe to have money because it'll be taken away. Um, so that's an example of that. Or um, if we, you know, often in these sequences of psychological reversal clearings, uh, deserving comes up. Like, I deserve to have a million dollars a year. Well, most of us, you know, have some sort of limiting beliefs around our self-worth. And oftentimes we feel like, well, we don't deserve to actually have that. Who am I to have that kind of good fortune? You know, somewhere deep inside, we might have this belief of I'm not enough. I'm not capable of creating that. I'm not, that other people can do that, but I can't do that, right? So these beliefs that cause doubt, um, I'm not enough. I, um, I don't deserve it. I'm unworthy. Often that comes up. And so we can use the tool of choice to clear whatever that is. Um, so in NET, neuroemotional technique, there's a specific protocol called Surround the Dragon, which, again, looks very similar to what we're doing with Be Set Free Fast, similar kinds of statements. It might be, 
Um, I'm okay with having a million dollars a year. Um, I'm reminded, in fact, of this really cool exercise with NET, those of us that are certified practitioners will sometimes go to these workshops called um, Net Success, and it's where you heal the healer. That's where we as therapists and chiropractors and healing practitioners, we go and work on our own stuff, right? So in those, I remember one time we made vision boards and, you know, cut out magazine pictures and put them on a vision board. And then what we, because that's what we want, right? I want to create a house like this. I want to have travel and vacations and all these different things that you're asking for, dollar signs, whatever. And then we muscle tested each other. We'd get in pairs and we would muscle test each other to see if we were congruent with every image on the page. So even though, for example, somebody might say, I want um, a partnership with somebody that's really good looking and fun to be with and all of that. And then we'd muscle test that person and see that it was weak. So then we need to look for, okay, well, what's getting in the way of having that? So then we put it up on the pitcher's mound, as they say in NET, and we, we take a bat at it and we see, okay, so I'm okay with having a relationship. Let's just keep it simple, even just having a relationship. I'm okay with having a relationship. Uh, maybe not. Well, so what's that bringing up? And we might follow the NET protocol to get to what that is. Um, I'm ready, willing, and able to have a relationship. That might go weak. Sometimes I got to break it down. It's, is it that I'm not ready, I'm not willing, or I'm not able? Right? Because those are different things. I'm not ready might just mean maybe I need to work on something before I can be ready. Or I have some idea in my mind of, well, I'm not ready for a relationship until I can get to this place in my career. I have some idea in my head that this must happen before that. Or I'm not ready to have a relationship until I lose that 20 pounds because nobody's going to want to be with me if I weigh too much. You know, like we have all these judgments that, you know, and that's usually what's at the root of a psychological reversal is a judgment that we have of ourselves. It's a projection or expectation that's negative. Um, or maybe we don't think it's possible to have a relationship. Well, I'm, I, nobody's going to want to be with me. I'm, I'm a loser. I'm, I'm, I failed at every relationship I've ever been in. Um, I don't even know what a healthy relationship is because I never saw that growing up. So it could be back. We might end up having to go back to childhood and clear out some junk from what you experienced, you know, watching your parents or whoever you grew up with and how they did relationship. Maybe you saw, I know that for me, um, being the child of divorced parents, right? I often had kind of a negative take on relationships, like, oh, it looks painful and it looks like a lot of suffering and it doesn't look like fun. Why would I want that, right? So these experiences we have at a young age really do shape how our programming and how we see the world and how we see ourselves in relation to the world. So psychological reversal gets us to look at that stuff, again, that we're, we're not usually conscious of, and then we can use these tools to identify what the limiting beliefs are, what the fears and doubts are, um, what the traumas are. We can clear those things. And then ideally, we want to get to the place where every, when we muscle test or check in with each of those statements, that the person feels clear. Yeah, I am ready for a relationship and I am willing and I am able and I do deserve it. And it is safe for me. And, you know, we just go through all of these until we, the person can get that clarity. And it doesn't always happen in one session. Um, sometimes it takes multiple sessions, especially if you're working with a core belief, something that's really um, deep inside, you know? And depending on your belief systems, like sometimes I might find myself working with somebody on other lifetimes, you know? Maybe the trauma happened, if, if you're open to that perspective, Maybe the trauma didn't happen in this lifetime. Maybe it happened in some other lifetime. And we need to do some healing work around that because you brought that in with you, this go around. So lots of space, you know, to explore with all of this. Um, and I just find that it's so valuable to do this work with people because so many people are working so hard to create something, to achieve something, and they just keep getting stuck and they don't seem to be able to get what they want. I think this is a really important uh, piece of the puzzle to identify and address. And again, the tools, there are many different tools we can use, but the premise is we want to get clear on what it is we're asking for, 
making sure that it is a conscious ask, and then making sure that we are energetically congruent with what it is that we're asking for. Because when you are, things show up almost instantaneously. I think about one of my great mentors, Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness. And I remember a couple years ago, he had said to somebody, yeah, you know, I've always thought about having a castle in Italy. I wonder, he asked a question, so your ask needs to be in the form of a question. He's like, what would it be like to have a castle in Italy? And literally two weeks later, somebody showed up and said, hey, we found this castle in Northern Italy. It's been abandoned for like 40 years. And you know, what if like a bunch of us got in and invested in it and turned it into, um, we can make it a hotel and a venue for doing classes. And sure enough, that place was bought. It was renovated and beautifully restored. I've had the privilege of going there. You can actually go and see some videos on my Instagram I have, and Facebook. I have some uh, videos and photos of this amazing castle and what they created with it. And now it is a functioning hotel, resort, resort, I mean, hotel, restaurant, you know, where you can go and just have this beautiful, elegant experience with antiques and just fine dining. And it's just, just such an amazing place. And it all came from a question and Gary's willingness to receive what he was asking for. So I always think of that as so inspiring and like what else is possible when we start asking these questions about what it is we truly desire. And another question I love so much is what would it take for all of this to turn out greater than I could ever imagine, right? The art of asking questions, right? And then getting out of the way because the way creation really works is it's kind of a 50 50 between you and the universe or god higher power or, you know whatever that is to you you your job is to ask the question and be really clear about it and then get out of the way be willing to receive and then it's the universe's job to deliver it to you so it may not show up how you want when you want what you think it should look like Never. I have a crazy story about how one time uh, I was hit with an unexpected tax bill of $5,000 and I didn't have the money and I had no idea how I was going to show up, but I, would, but I asked, what would it take for this money to show up with ease? And a few days later, I ended up getting into my little feline assistant, Wookie. I don't think I've ever had him on the show before. This is Wookie. <laughs> what does he know about ask and receive? Um, so I got into a car accident, a fender bender that I was pretty sure was my fault. And at first I went into all the trauma and drama of, oh, this is terrible. This is going to be more money I'm going to have to pay. My rates are going to go up, all this stuff. And then I stopped myself and I said, okay, what else is possible here? What would it take for this to turn out greater than I could ever imagine? And through a crazy sequence of events, I ended up getting my car was not, the insurance company didn't want to pay to fix it because it was so old. It was going to cost more to fix it than what it was worth. Um, they couldn't figure out who was at fault for the accident. So my rates didn't go up. And uh, I, in fact, got a refund for what I'd already paid for the six months because they were no longer going to cover. My rates went down because they were no longer going to do comprehensive insurance for me, only if I harmed someone else's you know, her car, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I ended up getting $4,990 and like 90 some dollars from my insurance company to pay for the accident for my car to be now deemed a salvage because I didn't get it fixed, but it was still functional. It just had cosmetic damage on it. And I knew I was getting a new car in the next few months anyways. So I was fine with all of that. And I got my five grand for the car. So it never shows up for the tax bills. It never shows up the way you think it's going to. And if you're willing to get out of your own way and let go of any preconceived notions of how the money is going to show up or whatever it is you're asking for is going to show up, the universe can gift you with some magical, amazing things. So if you want to find out more about psychological reversal, you certainly can look within the different modalities I've talked about, EFT, um, tapping or TFT, thought field therapy, tapping, NET, neuroemotional technique, BSFF, Be Set Free Fast. I've done episodes in this podcast on all of those. I actually did a psychological reversal class online 
couple years ago, maybe a year ago. Um, that's a product you can find in my shop. And I'm going to be offering this year, I'm looking at creating a more extensive class on the art of asking and receiving, where we're going to go much more in depth in this whole topic of psychological reversal. So you can be on the lookout for that if you're interested. And also in access consciousness is another modality I like a lot with their clearing statement. We can do uh, clearing these blockages as well. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I can't wait to meet with you next time and explore all kinds of alternative perspectives on mental health, on creation, on what else is possible in this field. Dr. Adriana Popescu, thanks for tuning in. If you like this podcast, please feel free to share with others and uh, like and comment so that we can get these tools out there and educate people and let them know that there are so much more that we can do in the realm of mental health than what our traditional paradigms have shown. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Kaleidoscope of Possibilities, Alternative Perspectives on Mental Health. This has been Dr. Adriana Popescu. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe and share with others. To find out more about me, my guests, and more, please visit my website at adrianapopescu.org. See you next time.